everyone, it's Amy Astro here and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you guys decided to join me and how are you guys doing today? Uh, me personally, I am doing wonderful. I just went on a road trip and you know what? I didn't realize how bad I needed that road trip just to get out of town, clear my head, open road, long travel. It was, it was a really great trip. So what did I do on this trip? Well, stay tuned. I'm about to tell you all about it. of my road trip was to go deliver Molly the dog to her new forever home. She needed to be rehomed and it just happened to be that I knew of somebody else in another state who was looking for this particular kind of dogs. So what I did was I put Molly's owner in touch with the potential new owner, got them together and made a match. And Molly is now a new resident of Texas. Yes, I drove from Georgia to Texas, round trip, three and a half days, 2,400 miles. Oh my gosh, that is the furthest I have ever driven. I mean, that was unreal. I am so glad I had my son with me. He's 17, so he was able to drive half the way. And I also got to see how he handled uh, city traffic with, um, let's see, when we went through Houston, we had between six and eight lanes at times. It was uh, quite a madhouse, but I've got to say, their, um, their infrastructure for their roads is really great. It's, um, if I was to compare it to Atlanta, I would say it was much easier driving through Houston which is probably five times plus bigger than Atlanta. Um, I was really impressed. So now that we have got Molly to her new forever home, it was time for me to do what I have always wanted to do. And that was to find an astronomy store. And guess what? I found one in the heart of Houston, Texas called Land, Sea and Sky. And they were gracious enough to allow me inside the showroom so I can give you guys a peek of what one looks like. Now, I would like to tell you that it was full slap of stock, but you guys have been doing a phenomenal job with buying everything astronomy right now. It's almost like astronomy is the ultimate social distancing type um, activity to do outside. You know, we don't have to be around a whole lot of people. We can stay 20 plus feet apart with all our rigs and still yell at each other and have a great time. But you guys have been really picking up on your purchases. I am just thoroughly impressed. Keep buying more. We want more astronomy goods to make it here so we can buy and try and do all kinds of stuff. But I'll tell you what, touring that store was really cool. And um, the owners are fantastic. They were just really nice, answered all of my questions, and I just love it. So what did I do while I was at that store? Well, what does every girl do? She leaves with a little bag. No, this is not a Tiffany's bag full of jewelry. This is full of astronomy gear. So do you want to see what I purchased? Ah, uh, well, no, you don't want to see what I purchased. All right, I'm gonna show you what I purchased because it's really cool. And you guys know I like projects and I am constantly doing projects. Oh, receipt, gotta hide that. And um, I'm ever evolving in what I want to accomplish. I've done, you know, the deep sky photography and I'm about to embark in doing um, planetary photography which I haven't tried yet. Um, I'm slowly acquiring what I need to do that. I'm trying to widen my parameters so I'm not forced to having to wait for you know these perfectly clear nights when Jupiter is there between clouds miraculously and I could take a picture of it. 
and I don't have to be as fussy about the moon with planets. But what about those days that are really, really bright, no clouds, and those nights that cloud up on me? Well, I still want to get out and play a little bit, so I thought I would dive into some solar photography. And what I bought here, let's go ahead and open this up and I'll show you. But this is going to allow me to use the, um, the new Altair Astro Starwave 80 millimeter um, 80 triplet scope and use it during the day. All I have to do is swap out the camera and all that stuff. And, well, it's a box inside of a box. Oh my goodness. Altair loves their boxes. The one thing you can guarantee is their stuff is not going to break in shipping because they got a box for everything. But let's open this box and see what we got. Chimes, bells, woo! Do you know what that is? Let's get it out here and show you. This here is what we call a solar wedge. Now I can attach this to my telescope right after the focuser. And I did call Ron over at Moonlight and verified that I could use this with his stepper motor focuser and not cause any damage. But I will take this guy and he'll go into the telescope side, into the focuser. And then this side, I will have my camera on top whether it's an astro type camera or a DSLR camera, but I'll have to accomplish the back focus on this side. But it takes the sun coming through your telescope and then it reflects it up on mirrors and makes it so it's not as bright and not harmful to your camera. And on this side here, I'm gonna see the shadow of the sun and that's gonna help me get some focus on things and make sure that I'm lined up. If I have a round circle inside of here that I know I have the sun inside my picture and I can start working. But this is just a really neat gadget. They're not crazy expensive. It's a good way to dive into solar without the huge commitment of purchasing, let's say like a quark or, or some other, you know, specialized telescopes. This one will fit on my 80, mill 80 millimeter telescope. Um, they say no more than four inches in diameter. So that's kind of your limit there. I know my 102 millimeter is about four inches, so I could use it on that one. But when I did the math through astronomy tools, I found out that my camera and the telescope that I'm using, it will put the sun all around touching almost all four edges. So really, I need to back off and almost use a shorter focal length so I can get the entire sun in one image. So if you're wanting, you know, literally, you're, you'll be cutting off an edge. So if you've got one of those really cool prominences going on, make sure you shift things over to include that in your photo. But this will get 98% of the sun in there for you with my camera and telescope combo. So it's something always to look at. But you know, it's really cool. It's a little heavy. It's not real heavy. Um, I'm gonna say it's no heavier than my camera. And now I'm talking about the camera that's the cooled version because they're a little bit heavier. If I put one of those um, Altair um, film canister size uh, cameras on here, it, it wouldn't even notice it. So this is what I walked away with. It, um, it comes with some extra little filters in here and um, a screw, but that's what's all in the box. And I know there's some instructions online that I'm definitely going to have to read up on and make sure I know how to use this guy properly because the last thing I want to do is ruin the inside of my telescope. So this is one time I'm actually going to read the instructions a few times over just to make sure that I know um, I'm not gonna hurt anything. But that's what I walked away with, this nice little black case. You know, the last video I was working on my Raven rig and I asked you guys for some, some suggestions on what I should do with it and how I should handle my guide scope. 
and you guys have really, really given me some great ideas. Now, I've got two overwhelming ideas here. One, one group of you all said go with an off-axis guider, and that is a very smart idea, and I'm seriously considering that one. Um, I thought I still had my old off-axis guider to try again, but I must have sold it along the line, so that means I need to purchase one, and they're in the 200 ish dollar range. And then another group pointed me to Williams Optics. He has a new handle that goes on top of your scope that has a dovetail mount mounted on top of it. So I can slide my guide scope into that dovetail mount and still maintain a handle for portability and, and moving it around. And that one ran about $78 plus tax, tag, title, you know, the whole nine yards. And when I'm looking at the off-axis guider, $200-ish, and then the handle under $100, and knowing I have to buy one of the two to make this work, honestly, I think I'm going with the handle for right now. It accomplishes what I wanted to accomplish by maintaining a handle and putting the guide scope on top. So what I did is last night I placed that order and we are waiting for that to arrive. And when that arrives, we're going to come back with another video and I'll show you how things are lining up now. And um, yeah, you guys did great. Thank you. Thank you so much for all those suggestions. I didn't even know that handle existed. So without you, this would not be possible. But please, if you have any more suggestions, just leave them in the comments. I'm reading through all of them. I'm weighing the pros and cons and what works well for me and all that. And I'm excited about this little collaboration that we have going on. So this is what I've got for you guys this week. It was just a short, sweet video, basically what I did on my trip. Thank you guys for following me along on this journey, answering my questions, giving me suggestions. Um, we had a great time. Really, we did. Um, Houston is an awesome place to visit. And we only had one full day in Houston and we had a great time. I want to come back for more. I really want to go check out some of those dark skies. Um, I saw so many possibilities of locations out there. That, I mean, the view is just unreal. How far out you can look in any direction. And um, that is just impressive. I mean, it's, it's very unlike the Georgia area. And it was really neat going through all the different states and watching how the terrain changed and the tree types changed. Uh, we went from these tall, spindly, ugly pines that Georgia is known for. Um, flew through Alabama, there were some pines, but then we started getting into some hardwoods. And um, I, I really do believe that Louisiana needs a GoFundMe for their roads. Those were the worst roads <laughs> on my entire trip. And it was funny, you know, I, I've traveled there on I-20 and they were just horrible, horrible. And then I came home on I-10, the lower route, and those weren't quite as bad, but along I-10 there were these signs, these lighted signs, messages to drivers, and they cracked me up because they were talking about the importance of wearing a mask, which is very important. But the second item was, is be sure to do your census and get counted because we need road money. <laughs> yes, folks. <laughs> to your census so you can have road money to fix all those potholes that almost swallowed my SUV. All right, guys. So I hope everybody is doing well. As you can see, I'm doing great. Having a road trip was exactly what my soul needed. Now I need some clear skies to get out there, catch some photons for you guys. Don't forget, I do have a merchandise link below where I went and partnered up with an artist on Fiverr and I gave them an idea. They came up with the graphics and we are putting it on a t-shirt that is just really, really cool. And if you look closely, it does include the Astro Cats, which I know everybody loves those Astro Cats. What is it about cats sometimes? But hey, you guys like dogs too. But enough of me rambling. I am signing off for now. Wishing you all some great health, clear skies, and until next time, I love all of y'all. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.